Hello and welcome everyone. In this video I'll show how I've made the rainforest jungle trees. As reference I looked at some pictures of these rainforest trees. I'll try to create something along the lines of this and then give my own twist to it. As the first step I'll create a few bases for the trees. I've used this multiplex board to do this. I've drawn a few circles on the board, which measured around 9 cm or 3.5 inches. I cut them out and sanded the sides a bit using this Dremel tool. I wasn't able to get them perfectly round, but that's ok. For the main frame of the trees, I'll be using these dried branches. I like to pick these up at a garden center, but you could also use them from your yard or the park as well. Just make sure they're clean and fully dried. I cut off the branches in the length I wanted and then attach them to the bases using some small nails. To make the lower parts of the trees, I will be using this air drying modeling clay. I take a few bits of the clay and use some water to make it stick a bit better. I made the basic shape of the roots using my hands and a few clay shapers. For the next step, you could either use this type of cord, but I'll be using this old cable I have here. You could basically use anything, like an old phone loader or an old computer cable you're not planning on using anymore. I cut open the outer cable to get the smaller cables inside of it. I clean the cables a bit and then cut them into pieces. I will then be adding these cables to the tree trunks. I will be using hot glue for this, because I find this works easier when attaching something like plastic onto wood. You could also use this type of cord, which is not made entirely out of cotton, so you can easily melt the ends. I can attach this cord by using super glue. Use a thick super glue like this gel I'm using here. This gives it a bit more grip and makes it easier. If you've used hot glue, then you're probably left with a web of glue strings. You can just remove those by using a lighter. I gave the tree trunks a coat of slightly diluted PVA glue. Over this, I will then be adding a few pieces of TP. I find this works a bit better than kitchen towels or tissue paper, 
because this breaks down more easily. Using some scenery glue, I worked this in around the tree trunk. I made sure to pull it a bit straight, just to avoid having air pockets. I applied two layers of this. I then used a few smaller pieces to fill in any areas I missed or could use some more. When everything had fully dried, I touched up the base by adding a layer of wood filler. This will make a smooth surface and remove any cracks in the wood. After letting the filler dry, I sanded it using some fine grit sandpaper. For the next step, I will mix up a few ingredients to serve as the base for the groundwork. I like to use an acrylic paste for this, because this will not crack or crumble when dry. I added the following ingredients, but you can throw in anything you think that looks good. Even though I will paint over this later, I always like to add a drop of color to most mixtures I make. This is just so if it gets damaged or chipped, it won't be as noticeable. I mix it all up into a paste and then apply it around the base. To make the tree tops, I will use these dancer type of branches. I remove a few twigs here and there where needed. I then drilled out a few holes in the branches. I used this electric drill here, but you could use a hand drill as well. When this was done, I clipped off a few bits of paper clip and then super glued them to the branches. I also drilled a few holes in the tree tops and then pinned on the branches randomly.
Using some baking paper, I folded a little piping bag and added some wood filler in it. With this wood filler, I filled in all the gaps around the branches and added a bit extra to the tops to blend in the branches with the trunk. At this stage I gave the trunks another coat of PVA glue which was slightly diluted. To go over this I'm going to apply a thin layer of tile grout. This step is optional but it adds a bit more texture. To break things up, I then removed some of the tile grout from the raised areas. The tree trunks at this stage basically consist of hard to paint and absorbent materials. So to achieve a durable and lasting paint layer, I'll be spending a bit more attention to this than normal. The first step in this is applying a coat of a lacquer based black primer. I will be double priming this at a later stage. With the trunks primed, I then mixed up some millipot to make a few small mushrooms. When it's freshly mixed, millipot tends to be a little too soft to sculpt things with. To work around this, I let it rest for a while to harden up a little. I then rolled out a few strips and cut off some small bits from the millipot. I pressed them flat and cut them in half. Using the round edge of this clay shaper, I gave them a bit of a curve and then let them dry. I added these mushrooms in a few groups randomly around the trees. I used super glue to attach them. As the next step, I will apply a layer of scenery glue over the trunks. For both these recipes, I have a video on my channel. I'll add a link in the description. Adding one of these glue mixtures is a necessary step because this will secure in the tile grout much better as well as the mushrooms. At this stage, we will be cooking up some jungle vines. I took the following ingredients and let them melt in a can at low heat. I also prepared a large tray of water next to it. I wear a thick glove so I can grab the hot can and then let it drop into the water 
creating these long strings. To paint the vines and give it some texture, I will first add some primer over them. I take some of this gesso primer and add a few drops of acrylic ink to it. In order to prime the vines all in one go, I will be using a sort of mass production method. I add them all into a ziplock bag, add primer to it and then give it a rub. With the primer still wet, I will then cover them in some tile grout to give them a slight texture. I then began twisting the vines around the trunks and mainly the branches. I secured them using super glue. These vines tend to curl up on the branches, so I added some counterweight to it in the form of these advanced tools. To make some vines that hang straight down, I'll add a few bits of copper wire and twist it around the branches. I also gave these a coat of the primer and then a dusting of tile grout. When this was all done, it's now ready to add the second layer of primer. I used black primer again, but you could also use grey. To achieve some easy shadows, I sprayed a very light dusting of white primer over the black. I then applied the base coat using a mix of medium grey and flat earth. mixed and added a few brown, grey and green tones to add some color to the trees.
I then started adding a greenish brown wash to the tree trunks. Next I started painting the small mushrooms. I base coated them first and then painted the upper sides with a few toned down browns, oranges and ochres. Afterwards I applied a light glaze of burnt umber to give them some more color and bring them together. To make some fine moss for the trees I mixed up some green herbs and some tea in this coffee grinder. You could also use fine ground foam for the step, but I find this fine powder scales a bit better. I added a few spots of PVA glue on the trunk and added the two tones of moss over it. I also added some of this moss over the vines at some areas. After letting the glue dry, I blew off the excess moss. To decorate the tree some more, I will add some of this preserved Spanish moss. I like to use this as vines because of the random shape it has. To give them a bit more color, I mixed up some oil paint and odorless white spirit. I like to use oils for this because this allows them to dry and still remain a bit flexible. I stained this moss in the oil wash and then let them dry on some baking paper. To make these vines blend in with the other ones, I also added some moss over them using PVA. I added these vines alongside the other ones and curled some around the branches. To add another thickness of vine around the trees, I will also be using this stuff. I'm not 100% sure what it's named, but I think it's some sort of dried plant root. I also gave these roots a treatment of oil wash and then let them dry.
I attach these alongside the other vines and also wrap them around the hanging vines on the branches. As the next step, I painted the sides and undersides using German camouflage black brown. I added a few drops of satin varnish to this paint layer to give it some more strength. When the paint had dried, I began painting the ground cover. I mixed up some browns and greys to do this. I then added some diluted green and brown wash over this and removed some of the raised areas. To add some more color to the trees, I'll be using this ivy I have here. I really like the leaves, but I'm not a huge fan of the stuff that they're attached to. So I gave it a strategic rub to get the leaves off. I replaced them using the fine roots I used earlier. I added some PVA to them and then covered them with these leaves. To make sure these leaves stick a bit better, I sprayed some scenery glue over them. I attach this ivy mainly at the upper parts and some sparingly around the trees. To break up the vines a bit more, I added some of these ivy leaves here and there. To seal in all materials at this stage, I applied a coat of varnish over it. I wasn't sure to use a matte or satin varnish, so I just did a 50-50 mix. With the tree trunks varnished, I then started mixing up a pigment wash. I mixed up one part matte varnish to two parts distilled water and then added some greenish grey pigment powder to it. I will use this to try and replicate this lichen you see on trees often. To do this step, you could use one of these, but for this scale, I'm going to use a fine tea strainer. As an example, and see if I have the right consistency, I'll be applying this to some black paper I have here. I add some of the pigment wash on the strainer and blow it on using my airbrush. Another option to apply this is to dilute it slightly more and then just hit it with something. It's a bit harder this way, but it can be done. I added some of this on random areas around the tree. If you get any overspray on the vines, that's just gonna add more realism. I also made another tone of pigment wash and added this over the other spots for some variation. This pigment wash will only be visible when it's fully dry, so you may want to dry it in between layers to check your progress.
With the lichen added, I can now start making the foliage for the trees. My personal favorite material to use for this is this dried sea foam. To make them blend in with the trees, I sprayed them with the same shadow colors I added to the trees earlier. For the foliage, I'll be using these small leaves from Nog. I applied some PVA to the tops of the branches and then sprinkled some of the leaves over them. I applied two layers of these leaves. At first, I wanted to use the leaves in the color they come in originally, but I then found the contrast between the greens was a bit too much. So I made a very diluted paint mixture and dipped the foliage in it to give it a slight filter wash. This also ensures the leaves will stay in sealed in place. When they were all colored and dry, I started adding them to the treetops. I chose not to make them very dense, and this basically comes down to personal preference. You can add as many as you like. With all the leaves applied, I apply the final layer of varnish over them. With this, we've basically covered all the steps and completed the trees as they are now. The only part that needs a bit more attention will be the ground cover. As a preview for my next video, you may want to hang on and save all the leftover materials from this tutorial. I will be using most of these materials to create this type of rainforesty ground cover. I will show you how to make this alongside with some jungle plants and flowers in my next video. And as the final step, I also gave the trees a few inhabitants. So that'll wrap up this video and I really hope you've enjoyed watching it and that it was of any use to you. I will leave you now with some pictures and a few close-ups of the trees. As always, thank you for watching, stay tuned for more and take care. Work complete.